Okay, this is our first video for the school year 2022-2023. Welcome to our welding classroom and one of the Lincoln Electric Vertex 360 Pluses. This video is for students to simply turn the machine on, set it up to the required parameters, and begin welding using a welding procedure specification form. All right, in the corner, that is the welding unit. They are set up for two welding stands, which is this right here. Very simply, to turn this on, we're going to go over to the machine, and right here on the top, we're going to press the button and the green light will come on and the machine will now boot up. It will take approximately two to three minutes for this machine to boot up. So we're going to adjust our view right here. Okay, as we're setting up, we're going to move around just a little bit so I can show how we input some of the parameters into the device. First off, we have a table, we have a work arm, we have the video monitor, we have our main support post. The main support post has slots and numbers. When we are reading the slots and numbers, we do it from the one that is underneath. In the case of this device, it's going to be slot two, slot 11 and then the arm orientation has to do with what letter a b or c lines up with the numbers so again we read the numbers from the bottom and that has to be put in every time we're using the machine on the wps form and this is a form that is copyrighted by lincoln I'm only using this for educational purposes to show students how to find the information. Welding procedure form, we're going to be doing an SMAW. We want to know the weld process. We want to know down here at the, towards the middle what type of filler metal. In this case, it's E6010. The rest of the information comes from the bottom part here on the chart. We're going to be using E6010 one eighth diameter with a polarity of DC positive and an amperage of 90 plus or minus five. Travel speed, we're shooting for approximately 14 inches per minute plus or minus 10%. Now, when we're setting this up, I will show you exactly what you're gonna be graded on. And I'm actually gonna do this on the machine that's been giving us fits just to see if it's gonna upset us today. So here we go. When you come up to the machine, you will have this screen. We're going to touch Lincoln Electric. You'll enter your first initial and last name. Hit continue. Notice that we have all of these different types of materials that we can weld on. In our case, we'll be doing practice plate, mild steel, one quarter inch. Please hit continue. That is on the WPS form. We'll be doing E6010. We also have gas metal arc welding, GMAW, gas metal arc welding, two different processes, two different processes for flux core arc welding. And then we have our stick welds of 7018, 6010, and 6013. We'll be doing 6010. Continue. This is where we have to feed the information into the computer so that the sensors, there are sensors here, there is a sensor here, there is a sensor here, all of which have to know where are the different 
items on this table set in order to begin. So again, we're set at two for the table, table height of two. We're set at 11 for the arm height. And our rotation is B because B lines up. We've now lined this up. Our coupon rotation in this case, number one is perpendicular. If we wanted to do it, we could adjust this this way, but it is set here in the perpendicular mode, so we leave that alone. The computer notifies us that it's in agreement that everything is working properly. We have these different backgrounds that we can use. Usually we just put everybody in the welding booth. From our WPS form, our amperage was DC positive. Our polarity was DC positive. The amperage was 90 plus or minus five. So if I set it at 90, I'm fine. Just a reminder to make sure that everything is set properly before you hit continue. Getting a new stick. Now, the view that you have here, that you enter in, this is the view that you see in the headset. And I'll just pick the headset up move it over here and you can see there is the welding pad. That's what you see in the headset. If we hit next, here's the scorecard of what you're being scored on. I'm taking out everything that is not going to be scored for these first few times. What we're worried about more than anything is are you in the proper position is your travel angle, which is the relationship of the stick and the pad, this angle, whoops, this angle, does it maintain itself all the way across? The work angle, work angle is the relationship of the stick being centered onto what you're welding, not that way or that way. We want to make sure that everything is kept constant and straight all the way across. Give myself a new coupon there. If I hit next, this is the mode where you can watch this actually happening as it's occurring on the screen. And that's where I will start for right now. When you come to the machine, if you are right-handed as I am, You'll want to stand with a slight angle to the welding table. Elbow up, you can brace yourself on the table. I'll be doing a slight whip method to this also, or whip motion to this. We want to make sure and make sure everything is constant. So I start and I start whipping out and back, out and back. And we do this all the way across. Now, if I was dragging this, I would just be pulling it across without going back and forth. We want to try and make sure everything maintains the same angles and speed. When you get to the end, just whip off the edge, just like that. Now, under actions and cues, I want to clean my weld. I can then, using the touch screen, I can grab this. I can spin this around and take a look at it. Before I can grade it though, I must hit end pass. Now remember I've gone one step past the scorecard, so I'm going to hit the previous. My score is an 88. My position, my work angle, and my travel angles were all 100. I kept everything constant going across. My arc length, which is the squiggly yellow line here, kind of went up and down a little bit, but it scored it at an 80. In our classroom, anything an 80 or above is an acceptable score. So if I take that out, as you can see, all of my lines, all of the, the 
items that we're monitoring, I maintained in a constant state going across. And that's what we want because in the middle of this, there is a little red line there and your job is to try and make sure that everything is as close to that line as possible or at least parallel to that line. We want to keep it that way. The only wild card in here is of course arc length because it's going up and down slightly. If I were to put the sensor in contact with our make-believe pad and just keep it there, it would be a straight line. If I wanted to add in this one called dime spacing, my dime spacing is a 95, but as you can see, I'm inconsistent, and that's in that whip motion going back and forth. That's something that I would need to work on. But again, these four, your arc length, your travel angle, your position, and your work angle are the ones that are the most important that we would like you to work on as you begin using the vertex or and using this to learn how to weld before you go to the lab. Score here was an 88. Not a bad score. I'm quite happy with it. However, as I look at my weld right here, I do have some issues here at the end, and especially where I went off right off the edge. But this is how you set it up. When you're done, you can give yourself a new coupon. You can go back out here and you can weld again. Or if, and if we wanted to, we could even add in some cues. In this case, Let's just add in two. This one called the whip. Actually, let's just do the whip. The whip. So I needed to practice my whip motion. There is in here now, I don't know if you can see it, but once I start welding, it's going to let me know through a series of interlocking rings, am I doing a good job? So let's just, whoops, let me give myself a new stick. See, I'm giving myself a new stick, just like that. Already I have a red mark here. I'm going to give myself a new coupon. And let's just see what happens if I come in with a new stick. We try this from the beginning. Okay, so here's what one of the cues looks like. I have green interlocking. I have an area here of green on green because there's an underlying element here that has to do with your arc length. Are you close enough? I have a red here where I skipped an area. Let's clean that and see what it looks like. that up a little. So as you can see, I have a gap right here. Well, I also have a gap in the weld. I have this area here where my, my laps, my overlapping area of weld material is looking good. I have this area here where I have a red ring. Well, right here, I was thinking about something else that I was going to say while I was welding. I pulled up a little high, and as you can see, my arc length became too long and not enough weld material was deposited. But overall, I have nice interlocking ring structure going across. Again, it has to do with arc length and making sure that everything is done properly. And as you know, if you haven't figured this out yet, you're moving while you're going in this general direction, but you're also feeding the welding rod in and making sure that it's burning properly. When I'm done looking at this, I can hit end the pass. I can go back one and my score actually went up. I got a 90 on that one. Good job. Got a hundred there, a hundred there, a hundred on the travel angle, position and work angle, and my arc length 
went up to an 82. So this is how we use the Vertec to train you to get yourself where you're doing the actions automatically before you go downstairs and then start burning rod and making mistakes which costs us expensive rod which may cost us some materials. We want you to be as efficient as you can before you go down. Now to get out of this once you're done practicing I'm going to hit menu. I'm going to log out. Yes I'm sure. Then I'm going to hit menu again and I'm going to shut down the device. And there you have it. Very simple how to use the Vertex. A month ago this would have been like Star Trek to me, I guess. Now it's just a tool that we use on a daily basis. And by utilizing it properly, we can train you to weld and become a better welder here at SeaTech in Homs. If you have questions, of course, talk to your instructors. And no, not trying to step on anybody's toes at Lincoln Electric, but just wanted to go through the simple steps of starting it up, setting it up, running a couple of sample wells, showing you what we're looking at, and then turning the machine off.